So one of the things that happens in Yankee Spirits in South Attleboro is I get asked how to make various different cocktails. I'm not sure if it's because I went to years at culinary school. I'm not sure if it's because I actually owned a restaurant slash bar. Uh, I'm not sure if it's because I was a bartender. Uh, or even if it's because I hang out at bars a lot to this day. But one of, one of the best parts of this time of year, the holidays, is making cocktails with sparkling wine, champagne cocktails, if you will. And the most popular one is a mimosa. Maybe something you don't know is where the word cocktails come from. I, I like to know where the origins of words come from. It helps me explain things. But the word cocktail actually comes from the colonial days when they were uh, using feathers as swizzle sticks. Uh, thus the word cocktail, and give me a cocktail. It was mean give me a drink mixed with a feather in it. Um, we're not actually going to use any feathers for this drink. What we're going to use is a good sparkling wine, Segura Viudas, uh, a Spanish cava from Spain. Uh, it is probably one of the best selling Spanish cavas that we have in the store, probably because of the price, $7.98 a bottle. Uh, it is a great sparkling wine to use for a cocktail because it's fairly neutral. It doesn't have a whole lot of sweetness, doesn't have a whole lot of odd flavors to it. It's just a very clean, refreshing type of sparkling wine. How do you open up a sparkling wine? The thing is not to open up a sparkling wine straight up and down. It's a very small neck there. The bubbles rush to the neck and pour out on the floor. What you want to do is open up a sparkling wine at a 45 degree angle. Much larger surface area, the bubbles stay in the bottle. It's especially important when you have a $100 bottle of wine that you're trying to open up and maybe not so much a $7.98 bottle of wine. Another important thing to do is keep your thumb over the cork while you're undoing the tine that holds the cork in. What does that do? It stops the cork from hitting you in the eye. Very important. Take off the protective caging. Turn the bottle 45 degree angle and twist from the bottom. At some point you're going to feel the cork pushing itself out and you have a little bit of a gasp. The recipe for a mimosa is two-thirds or two, two-thirds sparkling wine, one-third orange juice or some people like to do half and half. People come up to me and say, I've read a recipe that says three parts sparkling wine, two parts orange juice. Well, how much is a part? Well, part is parts of a whole. So what we're talking about is three-fifths of what's in the glass, champagne, two-fifths orange juice. So in this case, what I like is to do a little bit more champagne because I happen to like sparkling wines. Wait for the bubbles to subside. And this is the very simple recipe called mimosa that was created in 1925 in the uh, Paris Ritz. Great for brunches, great for the morning of Christmas, great for any kind of party. Uh, garnish, a little bit of an orange. And you have a refreshing drink. Um, I like to go one step further being the little bit crazy guy. I like to add a little bit to it. There are all different types or variations of mimosa. Uh, one is called the Grand Mimosa. And what they do is they add just a little bit of Grand Meunier in the top. What does that do? That ups the citrus flavor, the orange flavor in the drink. It just makes it very, very nice. Uh, if you can't afford Grand Meunier, you don't have it at home, everybody should have a bottle triple sec in the house. $7.98 a bottle, it'll make mimosas, margaritas, uh, cosmopolitans. It's that component in a drink that boosts up the orange flavor. And a little bit of that in the drink, you have a perfect mimosa.